good day and welcome back to a scenario where I will definitely take the cat home, do something with it or do something without it and end up regretting it. This is do not take this cat home. We currently have how many endings out of how many endings? 8 endings out of 40 endings. So this is gonna continue to be a wild ride as it has been for part 1 and for part 2. So buckle up, put your seatbelt on, put your happy face on. And just let's let's get into it. How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a great day. And we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna do something. I think this is the save for do something alone. So I am going to watch a movie. You're not tired enough for a nap, but you're too lazy to get started on any of your chores. So you decide to watch a movie. You get dressed in your favorite pajamas, make some popcorn with an obscene amount of butter, and head over to your armchair. Only to discover that the cat is already napping in it. Oh, you're so cute. You're such a death machine, you kill it, kitty. You frown a little in the thought. Your couch isn't the best angle for optim optimal TV viewing pleasure, and you don't feel like pushing it around and having it to put back later. The only option you have left is to sit on the floor, or move the cat and reclaim your throne. I'm sitting on the floor. I'm saving first and then I'm sitting on the floor. Because I don't want to wake the cat. Because the cat has mauled me multiple times. You decide to sit on the floor. The cat is a guest after all. And you pride yourself on being a good host if nothing else. Well, at least you would if you, had an, if you ever had any guests over before. You grab a blanket and some pillows and make a comfy nest in front of the chair. You pop in a random movie from your collection and can tell instantly that it's one of your favorite horror films. Yeah, this is, that's fitting, that's fitting. Put a horror movie on, yeah, mm-hmm. You've seen it a few times already, but it never fails to get your blood pumping. A few minutes in and you're already invested, getting reacquainted with the story and the character. The scares won't come until later, but... For some reason, you feel like something is watching you from behind. No, it's probably nothing, but you feel compelled to check anyway. You peek over your shoulder. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah! Only to jump out of your skin, jostling a few pieces of popcorn out of the bowl in your leap. The cat is awake and looking right at you. <sighs> you take a calming breath, recovering from your heart, nearly lurching out of your chest, and immediately feel foolish. It was just a cat, of course. It was so quiet you'd forgotten it was right behind you, even though it's the whole reason you're sitting on the floor in the first place. You shakily pick up the remote intending to rewind some of the parts you missed. However, as soon as you press the rewind button... Oh, Great. The TV shuts off. Huh? You blink. Confused. Nothing else turned off. The kitchen's dim light was still on, the, the digital clock was glowing, and the movie player was still rewinding. The power clearly didn't go out, so why? You feel a chill around down your spine as you catch the cat's reflection in the dark TV screen. It's still looking at you cats stare silly it's kind of their thing right and you're you're a new addition to its life of course it's gonna study you closely to see if you're trustworthy as you mentally reassure yourself you turn the tv back on huh what the tv is on but the movie isn't playing on screen it's huh it's you you watch yourself frown on screen as you feel your brow furrow in tandem. It's like footage of you in real time, like you're being recorded. You feel the familiar sensation of your mind focusing on a small on small details to avoid the bigger picture of your current situation. Avoiding the questions of how it is happening, of who or what is doing this, and why. Suddenly your mirror itself smiles and waves at you, all on its own. You don't wave back to stun to move. The you on the screen doesn't seem to mind, though. It then stands up. It walks out of frame. And... Ah! A terrified yell rips out of your mouth before you can think to st stifle it. On screen, in the chair, is the cat. But it's... Wrong. It's become a large, swollen mass of black fur. Its twitching pulse are rhythmical with its slow, almost methodical breaths. 
Its mouth is, is a yawning entrance to a black abyss framed by a set of teeth that look very, very sharp. Glowing eyes bulge all over its body. It's still looking at you. It doesn't even acknowledge your on-screen persona as they walk back into frame and pet it almost lovingly. Oh, pet it. Then, the you inside the TV touches one of the cat's fangs. Ow! You flinch at a sudden sharp pain in your palm. You look down and sure enough, your hand is bleeding. You're not particularly afraid of blood, but for some reason the sight of it leaking out of you sends another chill down your back. A thought, clear and terrible, flashes across your mind. It's not just the mutated cat in the TV that's watching you. Is it? Don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. You watch helplessly as your on self smiles and nods at you, almost encouragingly. They stand in front of the cat's gaping jaws. They look into the deep, dark depths. And as you're torn between the horrifying realization of what's about to happen and the gripping wonder of what they see looking back at them from the deep, deep darkness, they jump in. Darkness is a sudden presence all around you, pressing in, holding you down, and yet somehow also feel... Oh, and yet you somehow also feel weightless. You can't tell if you're falling, falling, but it doesn't feel like you're laying down or standing either. You feel warm. You feel cold. You feel everything. You feel nothing. You feel nothing. Ending three silent film? Ha! <laughs> okay. <sighs> Reclaim my throne. You square your shoulders. Sorry, Kitty, but that's my spot. You pick up the cat and place it on the floor. Ooh. It's clearly upset with you. When you try to pet it as an apology, it dodges your hand and scrampers away. You shrug and put on a random movie before nestling into your chair. It's some horror film that you love to heckle from beginning to end. Nothing but an endless string of pointless jump scares. Do the writers not know the meaning of the word subtle? Crash. <gasps> what was that? What, was that the bathroom? The cat must have gotten into the medicine cabinet or knocked something over. Coming your thundering heart with a deep breath, you pause the movie and get up to investigate. <coughs> Whoa! The cat dashes between your legs from the hall. Playing the scene only makes you look guiltier, you know? You're even more reluctant to see the damage now. You just want to relax and watch a bad horror movie. You go into the bathroom and turn on the light. Just as you thought, all the stuff in your medicine cabinet is scattered on the tile. You sigh. At least none of it looks broken or damaged. You crouch down to pick everything up. Click. Huh? Did the door just close? Did you bump it when you crouched down or? Well, at least the cat come in, can't come in and make more of a mess this way. Huh? The lights? Didn't you just replace the bulbs? They weren't faulty, were they? You never remember to hold on to your receipts for situations like these. You thought you'd be able to get your money back. Huh? You stand up. You shake out the pain in your knees from couching and open your medicine cabinet. Carefully, you place everything back where they belong, making sure nothing is missing. Oh my god! Ah! Exactly, what the f- ah! You jump back, slamming against the wall, covering your mouth. You look back up at the mirror on the medicine cabinet door to see... Nothing. Nothing? What, what, what the hell? Some, something was- You know you saw something just now. You know you did, right? I... I definitely saw something. Ah! You rush out of the bathroom and slam the door behind you without looking. You enter the hall and... No. Hi, kitty! Okay. No, 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 no! You shoot yourself with your arms and... Nothing. Nothing again. You pick through your fingers and see... Just your usual hallway. You... You don't feel very good. You need to sit down. You carefully make your way back to the dark living room, trying not to overwhelm your senses any more than you already have. Maybe you should watch something a little more lighthearted, or just lie down instead. You don't know. It's a little hard to think. You just need to sit down. Stumbling forward, you reach your chair. But... Ah! Hi, 
Oh, you're so cute, little kitty cat. It's nothing at all. Just a cat sitting back in your chair again, looking up at you curiously. <laughs> But it's enough. Your heart lurches so harshly out of a mixture of fear and anticipation that it completely gives out. Your eyes roll up into your skull. You feel yourself falling back. You're dead before you even hit the ground. You move forward. Jesus, stop it! Real subtle! Yeah! Uh huh. Real subtle! Like the ending was the same. So, um. I want to take a nap. You're a little tired from the events of the day. Making life-changing choices, like committing to the responsibility of caring for another living creature. Really wears you out. You could definitely use a nap. You head to your room and get dressed in your pajamas before you decide to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. You head back to your bedroom, ready for a much-needed nap. <coughs> Whoa! Only for the cat to race past you to the open door and jump on the middle of the bed. It takes its time muting at the sheets before sitting down and closing its eyes. Well, that was fast. You frown thoughtfully. Now that your mind is on it, you find yourself really craving a nap in your own bed. There's no way you're setting for sleeping on the couch. Certainly not in the arm armchair. Which means you should... Save? Before anything happens. And we will sleep next to the cat. You shrug. What's the harm of sharing the bed? Right? You both have you, you both have had a long day after all. You try to carefully avoid jostling the cat as you lay down, but it immediately scoots over and curls up against you anyway. Oh you you get it. You smile. Sweet dreams. Huh? Mm. You feel like you slept for a long time. You feel a warm weight on your back, but you don't see the Oh, missed to yourself then. You feel comfortable. You consider getting up, but as soon as the thought enters your head, your mind fills with a static and deep sense of disapproval. Not yet then. Okay. The cat jaws about your attempts at moving, kneads painfully at your back before sitting down again and falling back asleep. You fall back into us, number two. It's night. You want to get up. Ow. Mm. Claws dig, dig, claws dig into your back like a warning. Tomorrow then, right? Mad, yeah, um, I hate to say it, but I don't think we're going falling back asleep ever. It's morning. You'll be late for work. But the cat doesn't budge. You don't even try to get up this time. You just close your eyes and drift off again. It's, it's the next day, since the last several days, or has it been weeks, or longer, you're not quite sure, you're hungry, you don't know how long you've been laying down, you feel sore on your back but also on your stomach, your arms, your face, everywhere, you can't remember your last meal, the last time you drank anything, you've been sleeping all this time. But you feel exhausted, more tired than you think you've ever felt in your life. It feels like a giant hand is pressing you into the bed. You can't remember the last time you even considered moving. But somehow you know that you need to go back to sleep anyway. Everything will be fine if you just go back to sleep. Uh huh? You think you're hallucinating when the cat finally stirs. It stretches... L that's a word. L mm, before hopping off your back. You hear its feet paddling through, padding through your still open bedroom door, its steps fading down the hall. You don't open your eyes. You don't move. You're afraid you don't remember how. You're afraid that the static will return if you try. But you eventually do try. You try to prop yourself up on your arm. It's thinner than you've ever seen it. Thinner than you think should be possible. Oh, I just broke my arm, didn't I? Oh, no! The arm snaps onto the weight of your body and crumbles to the dust on the bed sheets. It doesn't hurt in the slightest, as if your nerves have dried up and become as useless as, well, 
as useless as you feel in general. How long have you been laying in bed? You don't have much time to think about it. Your further attempt at sitting up sends you tumbling over the side of the bed like a rag doll. Oh, I need more bones of crack. Ugh. Oh. Ah. But you think you're probably closer to being a ceramic doll as your body shatters instantly upon, upon impact with the floor. Ugh. Your head rolls towards the door, letting you watch as the rest of your thrown up, strewn body parts crack and crumble into the broken ruin as your consciousness begins to fade. The cat strolls into view then, poking and prodding at the remains of your brittle limbs. Bad kitty, you try to say. But you think your jaw might have snapped off earlier as well, almost if it's sensing your attention, the cat walks over to you. Well, your head at least. And you watch with your final consciousness seconds as it lays down, as it lays down curling its body ar around you. Can't speak, sorry. Purper. It feels warm. Well, maybe another nap couldn't hurt. You think? Adding six, just a cat nap? Cat nap, yeah, that's right. What? What? Ew. Okay. Let's move the cat. You tentatively nudge the cat in an, in an attempt to make it move on its own. Doesn't budge in the slightest. Keep trying, this is your bed. You push a little more firmly this time. <coughs> Ow. The cat sounds annoyed with you. Okay, let's save this one. Uh, again, you will sleep in your own bed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't I didn't mean to insult you. The cat opens one yellow eye and slides it up to look at you. <coughs> Is its voice a little deeper than before? It's angry. Move the cat. You move forward, ready to shove the cat with all your mind. <coughs> crash. And then I break every single bone in my body once again in my bedroom. Ah! You're thrown back by some invisible force and crash into the dresser by falling before falling to the ground. Ugh. Wind knocked out of you, you look up in a daze. You, you don't quite comprehend what it is you're seeing. A strong, swirling wind has picked up, throwing items all over the place, as if a miniature hurricane had just taken from form in your room. And right there, in the center of all of it, is the cat. Hovering in the air above the bed, its eyes open, glowing like molten lava. Sure thing. You watch as a vortex rips open in the center of your bed, and panic as the swirling wind turns into a vacuum, dragging you towards the bed. Ugh! Your nails scratch and tear as you desperately try to cling to the carpet, the floorboards, and a any and every piece of furniture within your reach. Bloody fingers slipping clumsily on every sur surface. But there's nothing you can do. As you touch the vortex, your body starts to disintegrate. Tiny particles of your body separating and floating in no into nothing. The last thing you see is the cat landing nimbly on the bed and kneading at your sheets before it curls up and falls back to sleep. Ending 5. Do not disturb. Okay, let me take a sip. Click load, right? Oh, whoa! Hi! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just so tired of everything. Oh, not you. Never you. But I couldn't be the person you deserve. Could never hope to be. You were so amazing. Smart and talented and independent. You shined. But in comparison, I... Damn it. So stupid. So worthless. But when it approached me, it didn't tell me that it wanted me. It needed me. Maybe that's what I wanted all along. 
one thing could be so fleeting, but to be needed? There was nothing I wouldn't give to have someone tell me that I mattered to them. That they needed me. You're walking. Right, of course. It's the first time in a while that you've felt like going out. And you're actually glad that you did. The weather is absolutely perfect today. That's a good sign, right? Maybe your luck is finally starting to turn around. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the possibilities of where you could go and what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in thought that you almost miss, almost miss it. Huh? What was that? Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound at the entrance of a lonely alleyway. The sunlight only just manages to reach down in between the tall buildings on either side. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward to lose gravel and scatter debris on the ground, softening your steps. Finally, the sound source comes into view and in the warm, almost ethereal light of the alley. At the end of the alley, in a big cardboard box, is a cat! Huh. Guess that should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark sea of its fur. It puts its front, front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. S so... You look so... familiar, right? And again, it is a cat. Not many different ways for a standard black cat to look like, after all. This one sure is a cutie, though. Just look. Is that glaring at you or hissing at you for getting this close like other stray cats have in the past? It's just sitting there, patiently, waiting for you to do something. I'm gonna save, because I'm not sure if I mess something up, but we're taking the cat home. Load and then we do this. Yes, I want. Take the cat. Do not take the cat home. Sadly, as cute as the cat is, you'd never take this thing home with you. You just can't take it. You just can't take it home with you. You're a responsible adult. Please stop looking at me. I'm bad now. You are, with rent and bills to pay for. Not to mention, you need to buy food and survive too. There's no way you could take care of a cat long term, right? You can barely afford this little outing on your day off. What to do? Oh lord! There's more! See, this is why you go back. Okay, let's... Let's feed the cat. The cat must be hungry, right? You can't imagine that it's had much to eat if it's so attached to the box it's in. Though it doesn't exactly seem malnourished either. Surely it must have left the box to search for food then. For some reason, something in the back of your mind tells you that's not the case. And not to think of it any further. Well, either way, you can't exactly enjoy your day out knowing you're left behind a hungry cat. Especially when you could have done something to help. So, what to do about the hungry kitty? I don't... The question marks are not gonna be clicked right now. Not today. Not this time. You're just gonna have to wait for the next one. I'm just saying. I know what you're thinking. We're gonna check our pockets! You dig into your pockets. And find a small piece of string in your left pocket. Not very helpful. The string is white, far too short. An eager and excited cat leaping for it could easily lead to you getting bitten and scratched. In your right pocket... Here's a bar of chocolate! You find a chocolate bar? Is it? No, it's not even expired. Quite the find indeed. You're about to offer it to the cat. When suddenly you're hit with guilt as you remember something gut curling. Chocolate is toxic to cats. Oh my gosh, I'm so... You resist the urge to vomit at your near mistake. You feel so guilty you throw the chocolate bar away into a nearby trash bin. An almost cat killer doesn't deserve chocolate. Is chocolate help cat? Swear to God, I've hold on. Is is chocolate 
I mean, it sure is toxic. I'm just... Why do I know it's toxic to talk? Oh, so... It's not because of the... Oh, it's because of caffeine and another ingredient. Interesting. So I gotta have seen cats eat chocolate. Like, Garfield probably ate a bunch of chocolate and he was fine. That's a movie, so... You go back to the cat, barely able to stand its innocently oblivious expression. <laughs> he doesn't even know that you almost... I'm... I'm so sorry. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> so cute. You're a horrible person. You know what? Stay here. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be... You leave the alley. And return with a whole fish you bought at a nearby grocery store. It was a bit pricey, but it was the least you could do. The cat eagerly accepts your offering, munching happily at the fish after you taste it in the box. You want to smile at the sight, but you feel so... awful. S sorry again. The cat seemingly pays you no mind as you slip back out of the alley. Not feeling like you deserve a peaceful day out, you decide to just head back home. Hello? Yeah? Huh? On the way home, you notice more cats than usual watching you from their hiding spots. But you try not to think about it. You can't help but wonder if they know what you'd nearly done. But... It's not like you meant to hurt anyone oh there come the eyes right you finally reach your apartment building you're about to unlock the door when whoa 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 huh huh you look behind you only to see dozens of cats standing there looking at you did you see feeding the cat in the alley and thought that you had more food for all of them i'm sorry I don't have any more, any more food for you. None of them move an inch. You're starting to feel a little unnerved when finally a single cat pushes its way to the front and... Oh no, the chocolate! I didn't give it to you! To be fairly honest, I didn't even think that it was gonna be for you. I wanted it for myself because I'm that selfish. Oh, it's you. Oh, it's... Held carefully between its teeth is the chocolate bar you thrown away earlier. It places the chocolate bar down in front of you. In front of- wait. It places the chocolate bar down in front of it before looking back up at you. All the cats look up at you. You can feel their judgment. You feel your sins weighing down heavily on your back. But without the money to buy enough food for all of them, you don't know what to do. We're begging for forgiveness. I was- I was not being- I was being selfish with the chocolate, it wasn't even for you! Don't kill me! You collapse your knees and bow down low as you start to eager, earnestly beg for their forgiveness. I'm so sorry, I swear! Look, I, I'd do anything to make it up to all of you, but- But you're all of options. Suddenly- Oh. <laughs> you feel something stir in your stomach and swim its way up to your throat. Clo closing off your airway as it tries to force its way out of your esophagus. Oh, it's a hairball, isn't it? It's a hairball. <laughs> Finally succeeds with aid from your helpless gagging. Oh, no, it's blood. Is it my liver? Is it my, I don't know, kidney? Bleh. Huh? What the? Lying on the ground in front of you, is it a fish? It's the fish. It's a flopping fish. You just... Threw up a living fish. What the hell? The cats come rushing forward, all tearing hungrily at the fish. You're, you're happy to finally be of help, truly. But you, Bleh. you threw up another fish. Bleh. And another. Oh. Bleh. And another. One more. Bleh. And your stomach hurts. You're you're getting dizzy. You fall to your knees. Wasn't I already on, already on my knees? I don't know. Maybe I stood up. Who cares? 
Tears and snot are streaming down your face by the time you cough up a final tiny bloody fish and collapse forward. Your throat and stomach both burn in a way that feels dangerous. You start to fade out. Despite the pain, you're strange to feel a more overwhelming self sense of hopeful pride. That you made up for your disgusting actions. That you've been forgiven. Oh, at least the cats are happy. The sound of happy cats munching away at their fish fills your ears, then... Oh, chocolate! Is it for me? You feel something being nudged into your hand. It feels like... It's the bar of chocolate you've found in your pocket. <laughs> you smile weakly. You've successfully atoned, but you don't really have the strength to eat your reward. Sadly, the last taste in your mouth is you leave this mortal coil. Doesn't get to be of that chocolate. But raw fish. Ending 24. Fishing for pardon. I mean. I. I. The, I. Yeah. I'm. I have. I'm speechless. I don't know. I really don't know what to say. I was throwing up fish. Did they grow out of me? I didn't even want to give the chocolate to the cat. I already said. Told it. That I wanted it for myself. Because I'm a selfish human being. So. Fair enough. And that was it! This is it for now! It's not it for the game. We still have how many more endings? I think I got another one. Four? Wait, no. I got five endings! We still have 27 more, so there will be plenty of more to come. And I hope you all enjoy this one, and I hope you all en will enjoy the next ones to come as well. If you did do, enjoy. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you haven't seen the previous parts, part one, part two, you can go check them out. Either I'm gonna put the link up in the info box or there's probably gonna be a link in the description for the playlist. And also the link to if you wanna play the game for yourself and get the endings like completely in a different um, sequence as I did, also be gonna be down in the description. Click the bell notification so you get notified when I post next, maybe a next cat video, maybe a next any other videos. You should check them out. You think I think you'd like them. I think you'd like them. So Without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I will see you all later.